After a two-year in-person hiatus because of COVID, the venerable Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival was back at the Howard County Fairgrounds for its 49th year. As always, it took place the first full weekend in May, and this year, that first full weekend in May was pretty cold and rainy. Nevertheless, there's no keeping a good wool person down. Everyone bundled up, and the sheep didn't seem to mind. Vendors told me they did swift and steady business the entire weekend, which is what we like to hear. Now, the sheep barn is where I always head first, and this show has quite possibly the greatest variety of sheep breeds on display, both in the sheep barn and in the fleece building. I welcome this time not only to see the sheep, but to give the friendly ones a chin scratch. Sheep are four-legged Valium. That's what I call them. Beautiful Scottish black face. Hi, bud. Some Merinos. Some Rupert Corydale. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hi, bud. The Sheep Show is a big part of this festival. It is your chance to see and be seen and get the respect of your peers. And speaking of peers, here are two human peers. That's Jillian Moreno and that's Maggie Casey, two of the esteemed instructors at the event. They sat with me on Sunday morning before I was due to give my own talk, and we watched one of the sheep breed categories being shown and judged. It was a joy to watch an expert judge at work. And if anything, we came away realizing that we have a lot more to learn. We never could quite guess which ones he was going to pick. And then we come to the fleece show and sale. This is a huge deal at Maryland Sheep and Wool. This year they took in 708 fleeces and by the end of the weekend they sold 80% of them, which is really impressive, bringing $48,000 back into the hands of wool growers. These fleeces came from 130 exhibitors across 19 states. And, oh, hold on here, we have to look. This. Uh, Laura Johnstone had two gorgeous ribbon-winning Shetland fleeces. This one here is named Francis, and then the blue ribbon winner back there was Atticus. Absolutely gorgeous. An interesting thing we noticed this year is that even though all the fleeces in here have to be offered for sale, some of the people, not a ton, but some, they had really, really stunning fleeces that they wanted to be able to show elsewhere. It's a really great way to advertise your sheep, your fleeces, your breeding program. So they price them at prohibitively high prices, like $300 a fleece. But otherwise, the prices, you could get a really good fleece for not much. Ooh, what do we have here? That was a uh, horned dorset from Three Creeks Farm. This festival is entirely volunteer run, by the way. Those people that you just saw, all volunteers. Oh, what do we have here? Gulf Coast Native. That's Jean Markey, absolutely beautiful. So you think you're triumphant that you've made it all the way to the end of the row and you look up and realize, oh, there's so much more. For me, the winners of the show would be the Finn. These were from Point of View Farm. The quality here was absolutely extraordinary, but also the price. This one here was priced at $56 a pound, making the three and a quarter pound fleece 
just about $182. So this is definitely a hand spinners festival. Just to put this in context, say you were doing a private sale with a really reputable merino breeder out west, you might pay like $8 a pound in the grease and that's considered expensive. Here's another one here, $57 a pound. Her name was Electra, I believe. Mm, there's another one. Just look at that crimp structure on that. I should add, by the way, this is not the proper way to evaluate a fleece. This is how you evaluate a fleece when you're holding a camera in one hand. <laughs> Otherwise, you want to really dig your hand in there, pull out the locks, and spring them around. This blue ribbon winner, $84 a pound. So that's a $315 fleece right there. It's absolutely beautiful, though. I wish we had smell of vision. Look at the color variation on that. Now we're moving on to Corydale. Beautiful. Different shades of Corydale. And then, bam, we flip it over to natural colored BFL. Oh my goodness. I believe this is Katrina Updike's BFL. Oh, look at that coloring. I'm not sure what this one is. I think we're, we've definitely moved away from BFL. Now we're moving over to some kind of a Corydale cross. Now we're over on the other side of the medium wool section looking at some beautiful California red fleeces from a sheep that was developed by crossing Tunis and Barbados with the goal of producing a breed that doesn't grow a lot of wool, but instead it grew a lot of beautiful wool. So it just goes to show you don't know what you've got until you've got it. Hello, what are we looking at here? These, we're getting into some beautiful crimp territory here, aren't we? Look at this. Border Lester Fleece. This is from Amy Spangler's Howard's End Farm. Look at this gorgeous merino from Martha Polke's appropriately named Black Sheep Farm. And then Tunis, Ken Farrell of Foxdale Springs Farm. Good breed marketing there. He had a sheet explaining the breed and his farm. Good thing to do. Romney Cross, only $20 a pound. Look! at the coloring on that. Another Romney cross with a much tighter crimp pattern to it. I really like what September Farm did here with their Coopworth fleece. They went ahead and spun and knit up a little stockinette stitch swatch so you could get a sense of how this would behave in the finished garment. And if you think that what we've been looking at was special, wait till you see the prize-winning fleeces. These are the special prize-winning fleeces. First, we have Margie Smith's Blueface Lester fleece. That was a winner of the special award sponsored by the National Blueface Lester Union for the highest placing Blueface Lester fleece in the show. Then we have a Gotland. This is the Best Uncovered Fleece Award won by Pam Helton. Pam also had a set of five Gotland fleeces that won the Maryland Shepherd's Cup for best set of five fleeces from a single Maryland flock. Then we have this gorgeous Corydale Cross from Shepherd's Hay Farm. This won three awards. So it won the Division II White Non-Breed Specific. It was the champion. It also took first place in the White Medium Wool category. And then it also won the Pat Brown Memorial Award for Best Maryland Fleece. It's worth noting that the Corydale part of this cross came from Jeff Rupert's imported Tasmanian Corydale semen. And that matters because the next fleece we have here, the grand champion, is Jeff Rupert's Corydale. 
that won the Division III Breed Specific first place, then the overall Division III Championship of all Breed Specific entries, the entire fleece barn. His was judged the best representative of its breed. Look at Peggy Howell's Corydale Cross. This, this one reserve grand champion overall, also took the Division I Natural Colored Championship and first place in the Natural Colored Medium Wool category. The best white Border Leicester fleece and the overall best Border Leicester fleece. That went to Tyler Howman and Lanesta Castro. And then the best natural colored went to Abigail Zimmerman. Look at that beauty. And then finally, I wish I'd gotten a better shot, but the Tyson Creamer Award for Best 4-H Fleece went to Abigail Willis for her Corydale. Congratulations, Abigail. And there you have it, some of the sheepy and woolly highlights from the 2022 Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. You will not want to miss the 2023 festival. It will mark the event's 50th year in existence. I'm Clara Parks, and if you've enjoyed this overview and want more woolly goodies, I invite you to head over to thewoolchannel.com, subscribe for a free newsletter, or join the flock to support the mission. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.